Hello and welcome to Couch Time. My name is Martin. I'm Sterling. And I'm Daniel. And today we're talking about nerds and stuff. I feel like we need to woo. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like so that like jazz hand. <laughs> I feel like we need to woo. So you're probably asking yourself, what is Couch Time? Couch Time uh, started back in the day. We've been playing role-playing games for several years now. Um, four or five, depending on who you ask. And uh, Couch Time, um, after each session, we'd kind of wind down instead of going home right away or calling it a night. We'd kind of hang out here on this couch and reminisce, talk about old campaigns, shoot the shit, um, stuff like that. So Couch Time for the channel is very much an invitation for you guys to get to know us and um, figure out what we're all about. Sometimes we'll be talking about um, channel stuff, sometimes we'll be talking about role-playing games, sometimes we'll be talking about miniature painting, stuff like that. So Couch Time is basically just kind of hanging out, almost like a video podcast, I guess, question mark. So um, yeah, cool. Uh, we do have a couple questions for you guys that we want to kind of ask and get your feedback on so we can figure out um, what you guys are enjoying, uh, what brought you guys here. Stuff like that. So, uh, my question that I'm dying to know is, what brought you to the channel? What brought you to Nerd and Stuff? Um, we've, so far, by the time this is put out, we've released uh, Star Wars Legacy of Ash. We did a Dread one-shot. We did a Fiasco one-shot. We also have just done miniature painting, right? That's all that we've done? I believe so. Yep. Okay. Uh, we have some more stuff in the works, but we'll talk about that later. Um, so, I'm going to put a card over here. I think it's... I'm, all, I'm used to looking at the cam or at the computer because I do all the video editing, so I know it's in the top right. So it find, should be over my head. Hey, there should be a card above his head. <clears throat> um, anyway, so there will be three questions there. We're just gonna I'm just gonna ask the qu first one real quick. Um, what brought you to the channel? Uh, whether you came for Fiasco, Dread, uh, Star Wars, or miniature painting, what was your first kind of introduction to Legacy? So we kind of know where our efforts are uh, meeting new people and getting to know some of our subscribers and friends. And then go on to you. Um, so I primarily are a miniature painter, and for that content, I just kind of want to know what your skill level is. You know, are, are you kind of a more of a beginning painter? Are you more of an intermediate or uh, self-proclaimed expert or professional? Uh, if you can let us know, then we can kind of help structure our additional miniature painting content to what you'll like. Exactly. And for us, too, I've never miniature painted. Well, the, I have three miniatures over there that are <laughs> fucking awful. Um, they were Sharpie jobs. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. So I don't paint at all to save my life because I'm terrible and I'm not artistic at all. Um, I know that you've done some miniature painting before. Yeah, Daniel actually taught me to paint, and uh, I'm nowhere near as good as he is, but he's a great teacher. I just don't put as much time into it as he does because I get <laughs> bored. <laughs> So, yeah, so we kind of have the three different experience levels, so we're just kind of seeing where you're at with your own miniature painting and possibly your interest level, too, to kind of shape future stuff like that. Um, and then for our other question, uh, we have some other stuff coming up in the works, and we're just wondering what kind of uh, future campaigns you guys are interested in, um, whether it be adventure, sci-fi, fantasy, horror, or uh, some drama-type stuff. Um, we'd really love to hear from you on that and see what you're interested in so we can do that shape yeah. our future shape role playing it. content Excellent. absolutely and he said <laughs> campaigns but I very much want to stress that we don't have a lot of time for campaigns we work full time jobs in addition to this channel so more like one shots but yeah. we um, we are kind of trying to figure out if we can sneak in another campaign somehow um, we really love role playing games and uh, obviously we started a YouTube channel for them predominantly so um, we're just trying to figure out what you guys like so we can make sure that we alienate most of you with our content as efficiently as possible. So moving right along, um, we're going to kind of briefly introduce ourselves. Now that our cards are done, uh, there's just the three questions up there. So um, once you guys knock that out, um, you get to know us or get to meet us. So my name is Martin. Uh, I'm a videographer by trade. That is my profession. And um, I've been playing role playing games for a very long time. Uh, I first cut my teeth on Dungeons and Dragons 3.0 and um, moved on to 3.5, 4th edition, played a lot of 4th edition. Um, in 4th edition we wrapped up and I think that's when we started Edge of the Empire system. We haven't played a lot of systems and this channel is definitely getting my ass into shape to learn a lot more systems. In fact, these guys could probably attest that since we started the channel, I've 
read probably four or five new systems just in the last three months. So it's kind of hard to keep all the rules together, but I think that makes role-playing games more fun <laughs> is when you can't remember the rules or you don't care about the rules because fun is the number one rule. But um, that's kind of me. I've been GMing, especially these two knuckleheads, for four years and five years. And even before then, we were playing just a little bit. So I've been role-playing in this kind of community that I've been at right now for about five or six years. So that's me. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I'm Sterling. Uh, I've been playing with Martin about four years now. I, uh, met him in college, moved away for a couple years, and when I got back, uh, he dragged me into it, and... Been playing, like, every week since. <laughs> yeah, pretty much every week. Uh, yeah. I haven't GM'd any, um, but that'll probably change sometime in the future, especially with this channel. Yeah, we're gonna pop his cherry. Stay tuned. <laughs> In more ways than one. In more. <laughs> Good. Anyways, <laughs> I'm Daniel. Segway. I'm a scientist by profession, and I'm kind of our, our resident miniature painter, as mentioned before. Uh, I've been painting for about two years now, and just kind of fell in love with it, and have been doing it since. I've been playing in Martin's campaigns for about five years, and have been doing some off and on GMing, uh, usually just as one shots and practice, uh, off and on for few years hard cut to you in your basement <laughs> by yourself all by myself roll the die you know <laughs> they always get the puzzles right it's... yeah they're they're, they're it's like so... they're reading my notes <laughs> perfect so um one of the big things that when we first sat down so we've only been a channel for about three months now maybe a little bit longer when this video comes out but um one of the kind of things when we first started this path out, a couple of friends were asking me, like, why YouTube? Why not a podcast or something like that? And so I think for that answer, we go back a couple steps. When we first started playing role playing, role -playing games together, um, we're all pretty shitty note takers, as you probably noticed from Legacy of Ash already. Um, so we wouldn't remember anything that happened in previous sessions, or we would um, reminisce a lot about uh, previous campaigns, previous adventures, stuff like that during couch time. And uh, one of the kind of decisions that we made early on, um, after reminiscing so much and having couch time ourselves, was that we really liked uh, talking about our adventures, reliving our adventures through stories and through kind of hanging out. So we started, uh, we bought a little $20, $30 audio recording device and we started to record them. And uh, we've been recording our adventures for <laughs> better part of a dec well almost a better part of a decade and uh i am happy to say that our adventures have gotten better and so now we're finally kind of bringing you the best of the content now or i don't know how many of you might have played fourth edition D, &D but that's yeah. where we started our audio recording and uh once you get past about level two uh it's it's kind of unbearable yeah uh we've we, we played a full campaign a good what was it, like 8, 10, 12? I think it was actually past a year for um, the Lords of Harmondale. And uh, the problem with 4th edition was that it was really just a miniatures game with mechanics, how to roleplay and stuff like that. So back when we first got together and stuff like that, it was a lot of combat heavy stuff. And so we had a lot of miniatures. We had a lot of time devoted to combat. In fact, a normal clearing out a room full of goblins could take up upwards of two hours. And so, I mean, that's, that's fun to play if you like that kind of thing, but impossible to listen to impossible to listen to. Absolutely. So, um, when we used to record it, it would be pretty much scrubbing through to find wacky late nights at the inn or something like that instead of clearing out a castle or anything like that. So that was kind of our fourth edition experience. And then we had one final send off with a buddy, Mike, he was running a campaign for us and, uh, we pretty much rapidly skipped through a lot of levels and we ended up fighting, um, what was his name? Orcus. Orcus. Yes. Yeah. So we just kind of prince. in probably the span of three months or so went from level one characters level one to 20 to 20. And if for any who, who have played fourth edition at home, uh, in your mind, you could probably hard cut to the fucking table space of your note cards <laughs> and your power cards oh, and your character sheet and your four pages of character sheet in addition to your web of cards. And, uh, it was a hot mess. And especially when you skip levels like that, 
Um, you don't know what the fuck your character is able to do. You don't know what he's doing. You don't know. You don't even remember where he started in life and stuff like that. What so. little immersion we had was quickly gone. <laughs> well, and I think the problem too. It, it has no. That that wasn't any fault of Mike. Um, the problem was is that fourth edition has its limitations, and one of the biggest things that we've done as a group over the years is we've continued to evolve the way we role play, and so we're we essentially switched very much from like, okay, here's the rules, here's the best way to play the system and stuff like that. And now we've gone very much to a storytelling kind of system. Um, we try and keep combat as brief as possible or as streamlined as possible, not to say that we skimp on combat or anything, but um, for anyone who's watched maybe our space combats recently, um, you know, they, they can be silly, they can be streamlined and stuff like that because Especially when you're getting into either video or even recording audio for yourselves. Um, nobody wants to listen to a bunch of combat number crunching and stuff like that. That's not really where these role-playing systems get their uh, their heart, their soul. Our last 4th edition battle with Orcus. Oh my gosh. We fought him for about three hours straight, turn-by-turn -turn combat. And at that point, nobody had dropped. You know, we were doing good on hit points. Uh, we were out of our good attacks, all of our dailies, and we had just barely bloodied him. Yeah. Which is a mechanic where you're, you've are you taken him down to half hit points. And at that point, our GM Mike just called it. <laughs> that was three hours that of combat long. slog, yeah. It, it was... was horrible. So, um, And that was more the mechanics of it, because when you just roll... I mean, that's just rolling dice at that point. There's no way you can creatively narrate combat for, for, for three to six hours straight. So... Um, but moving on, uh, we really got excited about Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition when we started beta testing and stuff like that. We were in the middle um, of a bunch of little stuff, and so we got into D&D &D and stuff like that. We, we don't have to do like our entire yeah. story, but... Um, it'd, it'd be a long episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, and pretty boring, too, because we've only ever played like Dungeons & Dragons and Star Wars, but... Uh, to various lengths and difficulties and mm -hmm. much, Success. very much, probably like your campaigns at home, uh, a majority of our campaigns have fallen apart in the past. And uh, that's a very frustrating experience, not only for a GM who's kind of created this potentially overarching story and kind of planted some foundation and some seeds and stuff like that, but as a player too, not getting to see your guys' potential. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the campaigns we played very early in the playtest of uh, five, or fifth ed. You're going to bring up the ch or the fives, aren't you? Yeah, I'm bringing <laughs> up fine. the that's fives. Fine. We uh, <laughs> we played through kind of this campaign, played through quite a few weeks of it, and uh, some stuff came up. People got busy, and we ended up not finishing the campaign outside the boss room. We didn't like. Yeah, that was a, that was an adventure too. We weren't even. Mm -hmm. It was the first adventure. Yeah, it wasn't even a campaign at that point. We were about to close the arc. <clears throat> that was also my first experience in fantasy role play. This is true. This poor kid, he was being a cleric of uh, this Raven the Queen, Raven Queen, yeah. and he saw this miniature online and <laughs> picked it up because it looked super badass, but some of those miniature sites only have like this icon of it that's just super tiny. So he saw it. Super cool. What happened when it arrived? Uh, it arrived and it turned out to be a female character. Uh, so... My name became Boob Armor for the rest of the camp. Yeah, or, or Breast's Plate. Breast's yeah. Plate for yeah. the rest of the adventure. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that was your name so much as, like, when you went equipment shopping and all that stuff. Yeah. 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 Anytime the miniature came on the table. <laughs> <laughs> there was there was heckling to be had. Um, not, not at the dismay of his character or anything, but mostly just the fact of how psyched he was when he bought that miniature. He <laughs> wouldn't shut up about it for a while. He was so excited when he got it. It was so It was great. <laughs> so, um... Moving right along, we would podcast, or we wouldn't podcast, but we record all of our sessions on this audio recorder, and you know we'd meet weekly, and we'd um, I'd upload them all. I wouldn't edit them or anything, but I'd upload them all, and then these guys, if they wanted to, could listen to previous sessions, or they could listen to previous campaigns if it was a couple years later or anything like that. So we've been kind of recording for ourselves as an audience for a couple years now, and we just finished this very long. Uh, these guys would probably argue grueling uh, fifth edition <laughs> campaign. It was um, it was a pretty pretty amazing campaign, and we finished it. And I was pretty burned out for a little while, so we played a lot of board games. We had a lot of false starts for role playing games, for campaigns, for sessions, stuff like that. 
and then um, it, w- it was a homebrewed take on the uh, the Tyranny of Dragons two book sequence from uh, Wizards of the Coast. Yeah, so we had played this amazing sprawling campaign. We met weekly for about eight months straight. It was exhausting. It was dark. It was eerie. It Tears was... were shed at the table. Yeah, uh, someone yeah jaw drops constantly. Corn dog jokes for you, Junior. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Um, so moving. Uh, so when we when we finished fifth edition, um, we were we were talking about like okay, how can we continue to evolve the way we play? Because for us, role playing games, every single time you sit down and play role playing games, you hope to get better at storytelling. You hope to get better at character building. You hope to get better at improv your voiceovers, uh, not doing Trandoshans, every single alien character in Star Wars. Um, not Trandoshans, but Toydarians. <laughs> or Arnold the Hutt. Arnold the Hutt. Yeah. So, um, but, uh, so you're trying to, trying to get better. So we were thinking, okay, well, um, what's the next step for us? And so we talked about podcasting or something like that. And for me, um, I guess for me being the GM, I really felt like if we were to take that step, for me, I'd want it to be a sort of video medium uh, because I have so much experience with videography and I run a YouTube channel for a different business and stuff like that. So for me, it just made a lot more sense to get into YouTubing and we've learned a lot of stuff since then. Um, I, I knew getting into it that there wouldn't be as big or as ravenous of an audience for role-playing content for YouTube, right? When you're when you're listening to this kind of content, you might throw it up on an extra window. Some of you guys might w- avidly watch it, and if you do, um, I don't know whether to apologize or to congratulate you. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We, we love all of our viewers, but um, I don't know, like watching other people play role-playing games is a very unique idea, and I think that it's definitely caught on in the last couple of years with stuff like Critical Role, with Acquisitions Incorporated especially. Um, so when we started moving into YouTube, we learned an incredible amount of stuff really quickly. And uh, now we're almost thinking like, man, podcasting. No, <laughs> <laughs> no we're, we're here and we're happy to be here and we're here to stay for sure. Um, yeah, so what we'll do is maybe you guys want to talk about your experiences YouTubing and kind of what you thought it would be like going in and how it's changed or how it's kind of evolved or anything like that. Cause it's been a long three months already for the summer. Yeah. Um, so Martin approached me one night and called me over to hang out and he Wait, dropped. <laughs> He's saying so sketchy. <laughs> we have sex a lot too. So he never knows what's going to happen. No, we don't have sex. Um, it's just heavy petting. But yeah, he just dropped the, this kind of idea on me, um, that he wanted to start a YouTube channel and, uh, I thought it sounded like a fun idea. I was a little nervous about role-playing in front of people, if that makes any sense. Um, what to do with our hands, which we still struggle <laughs> with. Um, but it's been really great to see the uh, growth of our community. Um, I never imagined we would be where we are right now. I thought maybe, like, 100 yeah. subscribers. But but, like, maybe not even that, like... Mike Jr., <laughs> our friends that we used yeah, to play with. The, yeah, the old victims of our games. <laughs> yeah. So the yeah. fact we actually have people out there, like, watching our channel and watching us do this is, like, it's really awesome. It just kind of blows my mind and stuff. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, For me, I, you know, when Martin approached me, I had been Twitch streaming my miniature painting for some time, um, and... It was going well, but I started running into some issues and scheduling and all that jazz. And uh, I had, on a good night, would be able to pull in about 12, 14 viewers. When we released our first miniature painting video, uh, we hit over 1,000 views in the first weekend, which just was incredible. I, I, you know, I knew there were a lot more miniature painters on YouTube than on Twitch, and it just. The response from the community has been overwhelming for me. I, I never expected I'd be able to touch so many different people with the craft. You know, it's it's really been incredible. And I think that's the interesting thing too. Is like the biggest thing that I've learned is that when we first got into this, it's like, well, what who who watches an hour of someone else playing role playing games? Well, short answer is I I did. I used to. I'm a big fan of another channel, the Dice Stormers. 
They're a channel based out of uh, Australia, and they play a lot of Call of Cthulhu. They play Pathfinder. Call of Cthulhu, I think, is how I found them. They do Star Wars Edge of the Empire, stuff like that. But um, I was a big fan of them. Obviously, Acquisitions Incorporated. Those guys are hilarious. Mm -hmm. When you listen to their first, um, they were doing like a pre-made that Chris Perkins and I think Mike Merles ran them through. I don't even remember what it was called. I think the it was very like first the Keep season. or like a Watchtower or something. But it was fourth edition, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, Acquisition Incorporated was like my first kind of experience. And, and obviously they started out doing audio as well. And then they've since transitioned to um, now their YouTube series and their uh, PAX. Um, live plays. Yeah, their PAX live plays. So thinking about like, okay, well, who watches actual play content? And so we... Honestly, we, we didn't know what to expect when we got into this. When we first sat down, we invited a lot of friends to like the channel uh, to mixed results, but fairly positive. We had a lot of support. And um, when we finally started getting content out there and when we, when we put out our first episode of Legacy of Ash, the kind of 0 0.1, we had uh, uh, quite a few comments within like the first week. And, you know, there was a couple questions, I think. But I just remember like when we got, I think it was either our first comment or a first compliment um i think sterling called me and he was like is it weird that i'm excited that we got a comment or a compliment on the channel and i was like no man i'm right there with you so um that's been probably some of the coolest things is like seeing the channel grow this fast and honestly like i get giddy every single time any comment is left um even if half the time they're just questions like, hey, Daniel or Daedalus, what paintbrushes do you use? I'm like, a comment! <laughs> I can um, talk to people! <laughs> <laughs> ah! I'm, yeah, so that's probably pretty creepy, but honestly, like, just amazed at how fast we've grown. Um, it was my birthday not too long ago, and we were at 93 subscribers the day before my birthday. And we were getting pretty close, but we had been stuck at 93 for a little while. And someone was asking me, I think it was my wife, and she was like, well, what do you want for your birthday this year? And I was like, uh, jokingly, I said, uh, really, all I just want is 100 subscribers. But I, I don't think I was really joking. <laughs> but um, that on my birthday, we ended up hitting 100 subscribers. And that was just so cool just to kind of hit that benchmark and just see something happen. And we had been a channel for, I think, two months at that point. Um, and we finally hit 100, and then so I made that... Uh, thanks for the support yo video and uh now today we hit 400 and it's been about five weeks since that video mm -hmm. so we've been growing like crazy and we haven't missed it we don't you know we just hit 10,000 we're now at 11,000 views and we're not taking that for granted we truly appreciate all the time that you spend with us and you know we we go through analytics all the time and we meet weekly and we talk about how can we make this channel better and what can we do to better serve our audience and you know we're, we're constantly talking about how to make the campaigns more entertaining or how to make the miniature painting more concise and stuff like that for me us getting eleven thousand views right now it's it feels really cool like we recorded this content with the initial hope that we might be able to just share it with some people that are like-minded just let them have the option of being able to see it and now that we have that many people that have or that many different views on different videos we've produced, it it just feels really cool to just have been able to reach out and touch that many different people and hopefully improve their lives a little bit. Or just entertain them, too. I mean, Either I don't know if Star yeah. Wars improves anyone's life. It's probably quite the opposite. It might have put a smile on a couple of people's faces. Probably, yeah. Or or even Dread. I, we recently had a commenter who uh, told us that he could not go to bed he or she could not go to bed until they finished the entire four hour playlist, which is pretty grueling. I mean, it was exhausting for us to play it. Uh, I'm, I'm sure watching it, uh, there's moments of um, intenseness, or if that's a word. Um, intensity? Intensity, yeah. But especially the third episode. I genuinely believe that the third episode of Dread is probably some of the best content we've ever made um, on the channel. Uh, but, you know... Um, I honestly just am every single day blown away by the support and the viewership and how much we've, how far we've come in three months and am truly excited about where we'll be in three months. 
So I think um, with that, let's maybe talk about a little bit about where we see this channel going and kind of some of the initiatives we're working on. Right. So I know we have things planned in the future. I know for miniature painting, we are planning a introductory level tutorial series. Um, I'm working on right now finalizing kind of organization for that. And then hopefully we can shoot soon and get that rolling out. Um, we are planning to continue with the thumbnail tutorials and more of the full paints. Uh, pretty much right now, anything I paint, you guys will see. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, so you want to talk a little bit about some of the stuff we've been talking about, maybe the three-player stuff? and. Oh, yeah. Um, so we're wanting to do a bunch of uh, one-shots. We have since we started this channel, I think, gone out and purchased <laughs> so many different systems. Um, and I think we want to just give you guys a chance to experience them with us. So I think we're going to probably do some one-shots, um, probably smaller group stuff um, for better character development. But we're really uh, looking forward to trying out some new systems, um, and getting out there and doing things. That sounded very redundant. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. Um... Yeah, so I know that like the header above the channel says, you know, role playing games, miniature painting, board games, asterisk, um, and RPG talks. Well, the 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 ultimate deal is is that it's the three of us, and we're we're we just brought in another guy who you'll meet soon, and um, so it's the four of us now, and we want to create as much content as quickly as possible. And these guys will never let me. I, I guess I'm always talking about this channel to everyone, especially these two, um, much to their dismay sometimes. But um, we want to just do everything all the time, all at once. And uh, unfortunately, work and sleep and maybe uh, wives prevent that from <laughs> happening sometimes. But um, is Sterling a single, ladies? <laughs> <laughs> um, but we want to... For the six percent of our audience that is ladies, <laughs> um, but we we want to bring you guys more content. Obviously, um, if you subscribed, then you're here for a reason, and uh, we want to continue to bring as quality content as possible. Um, and the reason why I kind of say it like that is, everything we do, we edit. Um, me being the uh, video editor for the channel and by by trade. Um, we don't, we don't, uh, we try and make concise content, uh, w with the caveat that of course there's going to be shtick and comedy and, and ridiculousness. We cut out the unnecessary parts. We, we cut out rules clarifications in miniature painting. We're, uh, we drawing try and make very and... concise drawing times, uh, any jump cuts. So when you sit down and watch a miniature painting video, it's pretty much straight through miniature painting. There's not... No 15, paint mixing, yeah, no random droppers, no none of that nonsense. It's just the painting. Exactly. So we're trying to... Uh, I know some other channels um, just will put out, you know, one, two, three, three and a half hour blocks of just content. And some of those can be very exciting to watch. Some of those are very dense and concise. And some of them are very... Uh, not a waste of time, but not very efficient with time and not built for an audience and not built to respect their audience's time. And so that's one thing for us is any moment you spend with us, uh, it might be a moment wasted. So insofar as uh, our terrible humor or our ridiculousness or anything like that, but we're going to cut out, we're going to trim the fat for you. And uh, that's the that's another reason why it's very hard for us to get content out there is because we want to do so much, but we want to make it concise content for you. So, uh, some other things on the future, we I finally overhauled the game room to where we kind of are putting the microphone up on the ceiling soon, so we have a lot more space on the table. And with that space on the table, we're going to be bringing board games and a second camera setup for some role playing games or whatever we're we're doing that day, but mostly for board games. Um, just finding the time is honestly the biggest hurdle for that. So that's our first episode of Couch Time. Uh, we hope you guys had a good time, uh, got to know us a little bit. We want to get to know you. So you can find us on Twitter. Our handles are like down by our uh, bellies or crotches, wherever I get creative with. Um, so find us on Twitter. Talk to us there. Um, 
If you have friends that might like this kind of content, like-minded nerds, uh, let them know about our channel. Tell them about it, uh, especially if there's a specific adventure that they might find interesting. Dread, Fiasco, miniature painting, um, if they're getting into that hobby or wanting to improve their hobby. Let them know. Uh, that's how we grow uh, as a channel, so that would be pretty boss hog if you told your friends about us. And um, I think that's everything for tonight. We hope to kind of do this once or twice every month. So if you guys like it, then we'll maybe do more. If you don't, then we'll see you in hell. So that's our time. <laughs> we will see you guys later. Until next time, tell a story, share an adventure. Okay, are we good? Always insult them on the way out. <laughs> see you in hell. <laughs> I think that's fine, though. I think that's fine. It's fine, right? Uh, fuck, what are we doing for the intro? So are we doing woos? I don't know. Are we doing woos? I think we should be excited. Okay. I'll do a woos. But it? here's yes. the problem. If we do woos now, we have to do woos every time. Let's not this is like woos. a... Because <laughs> you're 80 years old? <laughs> yes. And I have Lego hair. <laughs> you guys can woo. <laughs> you're just, I'll, just, I'll just emotionally project my no, woo. No, you're just... You, you be. To all you the go. empaths out there. You go... <laughs> you kids, you kids in your Pokemon Go, <laughs> get off of my grass! <laughs> I don't know what a Bulbasaur is, but I don't like him. Is it a weed? Right. Damn kids and their weeds. You're not gonna woo? I don't want to woo. <laughs> okay. Do you want to do anything? We do jazz hands. Can we do jazz hands? <laughs> Nerds and stuff. My arthritis. <laughs> <laughs> Jazz Hands is Parkinson's. <laughs> Jazz Hands is like molester. <laughs> they don't open much further than that. <laughs> Are we pointing? Did you just flip it off? I think you did. <laughs> You'll flip <laughs> off our audience, but you won't woo them? <laughs> That's kind okay. of what they've been getting with Legacy of Ash. So. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, here we go. Hi, welcome to Couch Time. My name is Martin. I'm Sterling. And I'm Daniel. And today we're talking about nerds and stuff. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Yay. <laughs> okay. I think we're just going to keep that. Yeah, that's I fine. think we do. Yeah. I, I was the only one excited for couch time, and that's fine. <laughs> you make this awkward. Yay. <laughs> Woo. We'll do one more just in case. <laughs>